Hey guys, welcome back to my AFK Arena. In today's video, we do have the Isle of God live on global servers now. So I just wanted to take you through my setup and how I'm going at it on global basically a bit of a guide but i feel like there's no set guide for this event because i feel like depending on how you play how advanced your count is and your thoughts on what other people will do will change the way you want to play it i'm playing it in a very passive way knowing that i have alts that i'm gonna have to do it on so i'm just i'm just show i'll show you guys my setup for that style of play and then some ideas i have if you're more serious about it and stuff like that so let's get into it Okay, so we've jumped in and we're in the first hour and a half of the event. And as you can see, I have been well and truly raided. I had my defenses set on like one of these and I've already got burnt through. This is on my newest account. So I, I don't have strong defenses. So on this account, what my aim is to do is to just farm resources, not to worry too much about getting hit because it's going to happen and I'm going to lose no matter what. I'm not fussed about my defenses. My teams are weak. I'm just going to straight up lose every defense. So all I want to do is... In like upgrade all of my resource building things as much as I can. As for pillaging, I'll do pillaging, pick easy enemies, and away we go. So the first thing I want to look at is the formation of my setup. I went with a basic defensive tower, um, then uh, resource building, defensive tower, resource building. Now that I think about it, I could have probably done offensive towers for pillaging, but I'm just planning because I'm playing so many accounts that my pillages will probably stay maxed for a little bit. Um, I don't know how often I'll come in and pillage, but that's just me personally. So I, I think in hindsight, after I set this up, I should have gone with the offensive um, towers instead of the defensive ones. Because like I said, my teams are weak. I'm going to lose most of them unless some allies give me some good units. But my basic formation was defensive tower, then resource, then defensive, then resource. The main reason I did that is because no matter what dice roll I get, I will be able to upgrade one of my resource towers. Like I said, I'm not stressed on my defensive towers um, because I'm so weak. So all I want to do is upgrade my resource towers. So if we go here and do a dice spin, you'll see we do one. I land on one, which means I get the extra resources because that one's already at level five. And then if I level it up, like because no matter what tile I land on, I'll be able to hit a resource one and level up my resource ones. Now, you need to get them to level five before when you're landing on them, them giving you resources. But the other way is that every dice roll, once they're all at level five, every dice roll is going to give me resources. Now, if I had two next to each other, I could get resources on two of them, but I'm just playing for the just general even odds of it and the easiness of being able to upgrade one on every roll because I don't want to get rolls where I land on defensive towers where there would be two and then I'd have to upgrade them. Now, as for the way these resources work is, um, they, they generate resources at the rate they say. However, you can see this one, resources, resources resume in seven hours and 26 minutes. So when you get hit, and these things get destroyed, it takes them time to actually be able to generate those resources passively again. So my idea is just upgrade them all so then every time I do my dice rolls, I land on them and I get resources and if someone doesn't attack me for a period of time, then lucky me, I get more resources. So as we go here, I'll do a couple more spins. As you can see, I got a single so I can go ahead and upgrade that um, the gold storage upgrade that one then we can roll again and every time i roll i am going to be able to upgrade one of my resources now we did land on the shipyard this gives us plus one pillage so if you're playing really actively uh what you want to do is you never want to be dice rolling while you have three uh three or more pillages because right now i'll sort of just use a pillage for instance just to show you guys and show you my offensive strategy so you can check their defenses you can tell this guy's got defenses on because they have the little shield around them but his are all pretty weak and he's got some level fives here and stuff so that's one i want to hit it's going to take a little bit of um effort to beat but hopefully i can land on some of his resources and actually go ahead and pillage them so let, let's uh what's going on here let's go do a two okay so now we get a chance to pillage this one it's a level four you can see the debuffs that are going to be applying, but because he's all elites, I should be fine. Now, when we go into the offensive battles, you, you, if you like, you, you can use your heroes multiple times. So that if they die, it doesn't matter. They'll be back next round. So that's the really nice thing about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this team. Uh, we'll jump in. We should get a win, I believe. Yeah, we should be fine with this. So this guy's a really good target. He does have defenses, but that means some other people might have skipped him. So hopefully we get some decent resources out of him. So there we go. We got 203,000 experience, which for an early game, it's 
pretty good stuff. So if we go over here and look at here, um, I don't think it tells you how much it's actually hot. It's held at the moment. Um, that's one thing I haven't figured out. Like it tells you how much it generates, but I don't think it tells you how much is actually there for the pillaging. So you just got to roll and we'll see, for instance, this one. Uh, it's got 92 there, so not too bad. The higher level ones, I just assume are going to have more sitting there that you can grab. So we're going to go ahead and attack this as well. Um, and you can get some decent sort of resources, especially, like I said, for early game accounts, this stuff is fantastic, uh, in my opinion. So we'll go you down there, I guess. Um, put you there. Put you maybe. Oh, this is a really weird lineup for my team. Uh, let's just do this. She'll go on to Sicily. will go up to Hogan. Fine. Happy days. And then we should be fine to kill them all and get the floor down. Land the kill and away we go. So this one's going to be actually pretty decent for resources for me. 92 dust. Not the biggest, but once again, not horrible. Hopefully we can get a big roll. There we go. We go get another 100 dust. So like I said, I think this the, these events are like phenomenal for early game. For later game, it's not as great. Uh, obviously, it's going to be harder for early game to win these matches. But uh, let's just go ahead and quickly do that one and see all the resources we can get. But the reason we want to do those pillages is because if we land on the shipyard on our rolls in the home screen, we don't like you don't go to four of three pillages. You sit at three. So you don't want to waste those pillages. But once again, if you're not stressed on pillaging, like it's not great rewards for a lot of people. Uh, don't stress. You can probably just avoid it, but it does uh, help with your level and stuff like that. So at least I think it does. I can't confirm that. Maybe I'll have to do some more testing. But here, 488... Uh, Lab coins, like not too bad, not too bad. So we'll go in there and we'll go ahead and defeat that. Do the same sort of thing. Du, 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 du. Boom, boom, boom. You there, you there, and away we go. Clutch ourselves another victory. And I, at least I hope clutch ourselves another victory. Please kill the totem dude. Boom, got him. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Totem dude's still alive. Stupid Taylene. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Brutus, die, please. Die, please. Die, please. Thank you. Thank you. That's actually been a pretty good run. We've got resources on most of them. Um, there we go. And we've still got two rolls left. Roll to one, which sucks. So we get nothing. Roll to one. So we can go ahead and get that one and get the dust. I'm just going to close it and confirm. Um, and then obviously if you close it, you don't get that stuff. But that's what I ended up getting from that one pillage. So we're going to go back. But like I said, you just don't want to be rolling when you've got full pillages. But that gave you a quick look at that. Now we go here once again, back into my rolling. Uh, and I just want to level up these resource ones. Uh, ideally, I want to get all of them to level five as soon as possible. This one's really nice. Unfortunately, it, it upgrades a random tower. Unfortunately, it was a defensive tower. But now I do have this one up to level five, which means now if I roll on and I land on one of those spots, I will get um, one hour of gold resources straight away. So that ain't too bad. So let's go ahead here. And I'm pretty sure that applies even when they're broken. So let's go ahead and see we can land on one of my level five ones again and see if we can get them resources. We did get some experience there. Let's go up here, level this one. And this is my last roll. Uh, unfortunately, it did a defensive tower as well. But yeah, that's pretty much my strategy. Like I said, because I'm so weak, uh, I, I just want to upgrade all of my resource towers and then my defensive ones i'm just really not stressed about plus like i said if you've got ults and stuff easy is to upgrade those key ones um work on getting that level up here so you can get the rewards and just basically progress through that now the other thing is your allies i've got my team formations here you can support players um and the cool thing is i think i'm already assisting the top two um so this one here if i go here do they have any without so you can see this one i'm, I'm, I'm already assisting there but you can use your same teams to assist as many people as possible. So if you want to make one really good team or two average teams, I, I just made two average. Like I'm not the greatest person to help out, um, but like you can make as many as you want. So like if we go over here, let's see, you got nothing, rip. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if we're going to find them, but basically what I'm saying is you can use your same team um, to help multiple people defend. So I'm already defending on that other team. As you saw, I can still garrison them here and I can garrison them here to help out as much as I can. So keep that in mind. Go and help your teammates out. Obviously, at late game players, you're going to have a lot better helpful teams than I do on this account. But just something to keep in mind. If you've got the time, jump around, look at some of your friends and help them out because then their screen won't be be just flashing with hammers trying to fix all the resources like mine is but that is the basic look at what i'm doing in the event like i said kind of a guide kind of not a guide because everyone might be doing something different 
but because I'm looking purely at that passive generation, um, I'm just trying to level up all my resources one, so when I land on them, I can get some stuff. That's pretty much the gist. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.